Only when we are at our most playful can divinity finally get serious with us. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Gia Lulich, author of Joyful Journey, a guide back to the wild self. And in this video, I want to share with you a really, really important hack to getting what you want through this amazing quote by Elizabeth Gilbert from her book, The Big Magic. So what does this quote mean? Only when we are at our most playful can divinity finally get serious with us. It basically means that we need to be at a certain frequency of playfulness, joy, non-attachment to actually be able to attract the things that we want in our life. I really love this quote because it's something that I came to to believe before I read any books on law of attraction. In fact, I started to believe this philosophy when I was about 10 or 11 years old and it was just through my own experiment with reality that I came to believe that when I was in a certain state of mind that things were going to unfold really effortlessly and that even things that were really unlikely would happen for me. I kind of kept this to myself for a really really long time because like a lot of people I just assumed it was something in my head and it was a game that I like to play with myself Myself, until I started to research and do reading of different types of philosophies, religion, and then I realized that this was actually a thing, that what we attract into our life is actually dependent on the frequency that we are in. And this applies to our moment to moment life. You would have noticed yourself that sometimes when you wake up in the morning and you're really, really happy, you're feeling really grateful, everything seems to flow. And then on the contrary, you notice that sometimes you wake up on the wrong side of the bed feeling really really down and before you know it everything you could possibly think of has gone wrong. Throughout my experience I found that this is not just a coincidence because when you start to become intentional about the kind of state that you are in meaning that if you do wake up on the wrong side of the bed you do everything you can to try and get on the right side of bed so to speak <laughs> or in this case, in the right state of mind to ensure that your day flows, things do pick up and things do start to regain that same flow. And the more I've experimented with this theory, the more it has been proven to me that my state of mind is everything when it relates to getting exactly what I want. So let's dissect this idea of playfulness. When we are in a state of playfulness, first of all, we are in the present moment. We're not concerned about the future. We're not concerned about the past. We are just feeling really elevated and happy just to be where we are. Secondly, we are in a state of non-attachment, which means that we're completely immersed in the moment and we're not thinking about what the result of that is going to be. And thirdly, and most importantly, as I mentioned before, we are in that elevated state. And when we desire something that we anticipate will bring us happiness, we actually need to be in that happy and high state to be able to attract that. The key to this practice is a little bit paradoxical. We do not get into this state so that we can get things. We simply get into this state because it's a fun place to be. It's fun to enjoy our life moment to moment, to be present in everything we do, to be engaged, to be immersed, and to be focused with everything we do. Not thinking about the past, not thinking about the future, not thinking about where this is going to take us. In very simple terms, focus on enjoying your life. Focus on feeling inspired, impassioned. And if you apply nothing else but this principle, I promise you that your life will take on so much more joy, so much more empowerment, and you're going to see things manifest that you never ever thought possible. 
I want to share one example with you today from my own experience. While I was studying in France, Bordeaux, the whole time I kept asking everyone if they wanted to come to Amsterdam with me. No one was able to come with me. As it got to the end of the trip, I kind of forgot about this desire I had and was just having the best time. And basically what happened was on my last day in Bordeaux, I ended up missing the plane. That's a really funny story, which I'm not going to go into but basically I ended up having to rebook my flight over the next three days so there are two things to this story which are kind of mind-blowing to me till this day the first is that I had given up my key to my apartment so that day I had missed my plane and I had to go back my phone had also died it felt like a really hopeless situation I was going back to Bordeaux it started to snow as well I was on the tram and my human self was telling me you should be really freaking out about this you're going back to Bordeaux you've got nowhere to state you're not sure how much money you've got on your bank account your phone has died you can't even call anyone and you might just have to spend a night homeless for some reason I was just in such a calm and unfazed state it was like I knew that I would be okay on some really visceral level to the point where I found myself in that tram watching the snow come down with my three suitcases thinking what adventure awaits me and I know this has happened for a reason and I wonder what that reason is. Then the tram arrived to Bordeaux and because I'm horrible with directions, I just couldn't even remember where my friend lived who dropped me off. I just had this impulse to kind of follow my feet and I thought to myself, maybe I will find this house by accident. The thing is that in Bordeaux, if you've ever been, every single street looks exactly the same. And so I just, I don't even know why I believed this voice in my head that said to me, if you just keep walking, maybe you'll come across it. Within five minutes of actually walking, I ran into my friend who dropped me off. And the funniest thing was, the first thing he said to me, was that he had just driven his mum back to the countryside. He wanted to stay as well, but something was calling him back to Bordeaux. And as soon as he saw me, he was like, I guess it was you calling me back to Bordeaux. Long story short, we had the most incredible three more days in Bordeaux. And then on the way to the airport, I looked at my plane ticket and I realized that the plane was actually going to Amsterdam. And I checked the hours and it turned out that I would be in Amsterdam from in the morning when the plane landed until like nine in the evening. So I actually had a whole day in Amsterdam. I was so happy and suddenly it all makes sense why this happened. I was super, super excited. I found one of those places at the airport where you could leave your luggage and got on the train to Amsterdam and there was a girl sitting across from me and a couple next to us who was kind of arguing so her and I were kind of smiling to each other about this whole funny situation and when the train got to Amsterdam we got talking and she said like where are you going um, and I just said I'm on my own I've got one day to explore and she said to me why don't you join me I'm meeting up with a few of my friends we'll take you around we know the city well and we'll show you some really fun places I agreed immediately because she seemed really lovely she was around my age and I just had the best day in Amsterdam it was literally feeling like I'd known these people my whole life it felt like they were all friends we just had the most fantastic time together the conversation was so easy and at the end of the day they took me to the station to make sure that I got on the train safely back to the airport and I'd never heard from them again I really love this story because it's a really good example of how when it looks like things have gone wrong it is still the universe conspiring to get you to where you want to be and as long as you remain centered and calm and in faith during that time you will soon realize why you actually had to take that different route to where you are heading. So if it's one message that I want to give you guys for 2024, it's to remain playful, remain light. And I know that life doesn't always allow us to do that. There are things going on all the time that are not to our advantage that we don't want to see happening. But as long as we remain in faith,
safe and unbothered and centered and do everything we can to remain in that playful and light state believing that whatever was happening was ultimately for our highest good that we will really really soon see why this perhaps unfavorable circumstance happened and realize that it actually took us to somewhere where we wanted to go if you have experimented with this theory yourself please leave it in the comment section below. I would love, love to know your story. If you haven't experimented with this principle, please do try it in the new year. If you apply it correctly, it's going to change your experience and it's going to really, really bring those things that you want into your reality so quickly, you just won't believe it. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. Tell me what your experience with this principle was. Thanks again so, so much for watching and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Ciao for now.